So we have, we have seen how differentiability implies Cauchy Riemann conditions and Cauchy Riemann conditions are, you know, are also part of the sufficiency requirements. Now, there is a way to think about these Cauchy Riemann conditions in a much more direct way. Right? So, a function of a complex variable uh, is differentiable only if the function is of a very special kind. Right? And that is something that we can sort of directly see from the function. And right? so that's the perspective which we want to provide in this lecture. Right. So, so once again, so we see that if your function f of z is equal to u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y, you know, if these conditions hold, dou u by dou x equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y equal to minus dou v by dou x, then, you know, the Cauchy Riemann conditions hold and if these functions are, you know, smooth enough, defined in a, well, a neighborhood of this point, then the function is differentiable. So the thing is that, you know, a, a, a function of two variables, uh, you know, any arbitrary function is not going to make your overall function of the complex variable differentiable, right? So we might think of this as really being made up of two variables, x and y, and so if you tie together any two functions, u and v, that's not going to make a nice enough function for f, right? So, I mean, although a complex variable has two variables and you're thinking of, you know, a function of two variables, a function of a complex variable is slightly more than just this. So, in fact, it must be a function of this very nice combination of these two variables. Now, any arbitrary combination does not work. So, it must be of this kind, the z, it's a function of z, right? So, we write it as f of z. And so, only where, whenever x appears, x plus i y must appear in that way. Only then will your function be, you know, a nice function. And that's basically the content of the Cauchy Riemann condition. So, this is something that we can we can see more directly and that's what we are going to do here. So since x is you know the real part of z, so we can write x as z plus z star over 2 and y is the imaginary part so we can write it as z minus z star over 2 i. Right? So the original function itself can be thought of as you know it has its u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y but you can write it as u of z plus z star over 2 comma z minus z star over 2i plus i times v of z plus z star over 2 comma z minus z star over 2i. So you can actually think of this function as being made up of these two independent variables. So think of z star itself as an independent variable and let's see what is uh, what happens if you take this derivative. Suppose we take this partial derivative with respect to z star, right? So dou f by dou z star is the same as dou f by dou x. And so we are applying the chain rule. So dou f by uh, dou x. So, so you think of this function as you know, having two independent variables, z comma z star. So to make that explicit, I have written f as like here, right? Although we are used to think of f as just as a function of z. But, you know, z itself is made up of two independent variables x comma y or we could also think of this function in general as being a function of you know these two independent variables z comma z star. So if you take this partial derivative dou f with respect dou f with respect to z star dou f by dou z star then you can write it as dou f by dou x times dou x by dou z star plus dou f by dou y times dou y by dou z star. But dou f by uh, so dou x by dou z star is nothing but half from here we know this and dou y by dou z star is nothing but uh, minus uh, minus 1 by 2 i right so we have these two relations which come from the definition right so dou f by dou z star is nothing but half dou f by dou x minus 1 over 2 i dou f by dou y and we can write f you know expand it out and write it as u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y and then we can collect all the terms which are you know the real part and the imaginary part separately so we see that this is nothing but half dou u by dou x minus dou v by dou y 
plus i by 2 times dou v by dou x plus dou u by dou y. Right? So we immediately observe that you know this is in a very suggestive form. Right? So this combination we are very familiar with and so are we with this combination. So this quantity, this dou f by dou z star is going to vanish if the Cauchy Riemann conditions hold. Right? So dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou, dou v by dou x is equal to minus dou u by dou y. So in fact, this condition dou f by dou z star equal to 0 is equivalent to the Cauchy Riemann condition. So this is what is called the complex form of the Cauchy Riemann conditions. Right? So if you pause for a moment to think what this means, so it's the statement that you know this function f should be dependent only on z and it should have no dependence on z star right so explicitly so with that that's what is basically the content of the cauchy riemann conditions right so that and it's only when that happens that you know uh, the derivative of a function f with respect to z is well defined only if it has no dependence on z star right so that's just another way of thinking about cauchy riemann conditions we which we have worked out you know first of all looking at uh, you know functions properties in the cartesian system but also cauchy riemann conditions in the polar coordinate system as well but essentially it's just the statement that there is no role for z star right so that now if in the backdrop of this understanding, if we go back to some of our examples, we see whenever we had z star, we ran into trouble. Such functions were not nice functions for differentiability. And now there is a, you know, an understanding for why that was happening comes out. If we think about, you know, f as a function of z comma z star, and if only functions which are purely functions of z are the ones which are differentiable. So let's go back and look at two examples which we have already seen so f of z equal to z star z squared is a very nice function we never had any difficulties here and we see immediately that dou f by dou z star is equal to zero there is no dependence on z star it's purely a function of z alone therefore we can go ahead and take a derivative we know that its derivative is just 2z everywhere so it's cauchy riemann conditions will hold uh, you know everywhere and so it's a very nice function on the other hand if you look at this function f of z is equal to mod z squared so this is where we ran into difficulties whenever you have something to do with z star and so there is no way to represent the information in mod z squared without recourse to z star so in fact this function is nothing but z times z star right so z cannot uh, you know get give for you what z star will you there is no way to you know get all the information in this without using z star therefore if you do do f by do z star that's going to be z and this we have seen is zero only i mean this is zero at only at the origin and so indeed the cauchy riemann conditions are satisfied only at the origin as we have already seen and so this particular function it turns out is is differentiable at the origin right and cauchy riemann conditions hold only at the origin and nowhere else right so this is something we have already seen but this is some extra perspective for the cauchy riemann condition okay thank you